You're, of course, showing off because here I am with a big jacket and you're without one. Now, <laughs> you're the number one player gaining traction in the Americas as well as Asia outside of Europe. I mean, it's hard to stay on top, especially with competition from China. What is the strategy? Nah, I think it's, uh, we, are, we, are, we are literally pursuing the same. We have put, uh, we have put our assets up, super high uh, technology power houses up for, for more than four decades. What is also super interesting to see is that the whole allocation into now the energy sector and especially also the renewable sector has of course led to an acceleration of that. So to give you an example, a decade ago uh, to compare to today, we have reduced somewhere around the levelized cost of energy with two thirds uh, just 10 years ago. And that also means that we now have an energy source from wind that is literally uh, either on or below uh, other energy sources uh, globally, which of course for me is just uh, perfect. Uh, you talk about cutting costs. Can you compete solely on costs when competing with Chinese developers? No, but you, I, I don't think it's a, it's a question about Chinese developers or something. This is a, this is a global uh, market and, and reality is right now that if you look at the demand and the supply side, uh, we are constantly expanding uh, manufacturing footprint. So I don't think it's a cost question. It is more how effective are your assets going to be and for how long. Uh, because w you would appreciate when we talk about energy transition today, this is not about what happens in 20, it's what happens in 2030, it's what happens in 2040. And, and that is far bigger than just a single question about two companies. This is, this is a global question. And of course, we, as the global capacity provider uh, on the supply side, we're constantly uh, expanding that. So confident of staying on top, confident of being number one confident as I'm sitting here it's cold outside <laughs> and, and still I keep my, my heat. Let's take a look at uh, the cost of carbon expected to be at 30 euros by year and how is that impacting you? Yeah, but I, as I said, it's, it's for us, uh, when we look at things, we, we constantly try to, to, to live with their variables and there will be variables in the supply chain, there will be variables in the market we live with. I think what we have kept uh, really throughout now many years is a long-term view of where do we need to be from a competitive point of view. And then uh, as we also just come out of a year which we expect or commented on a number of times, you would have challenges in a year when there are uh, many changes variables like the tariffs, the trade war and others, which probably affected us negatively within the year. Uh, but I will also say that is to be overcome of a global organization like Vestas and a leadership team uh, that shows the strength of it. But does it create any problem for you? Is it a challenge? No. And uh, honestly not, because right now I think the challenge is that we have a number of both companies and countries around the world that we need to serve as customers for our energy solutions. When there are then variables uh, coming to that, they come not only to us, but they come to the world. So all of the variables the world has to live with, I think it's more that we then transparently say, how are we going to deal with the variables on your energy solution? Given, gi given the confidence, given the optimism, I mean, give us a sense of the outlook for wind turbines for 2020, 2021. That's super nice, but as I'm releasing my <laughs> annual report on the 5th of February, I'm not going to fall into that trap. But I'm just saying here, uh, it, it cannot avoid uh, uh, affecting you when you walk around three days uh, here in, in Davos. Um, you literally meet uh, our direct customers, you need countries and other stuff. Uh, we have all the time said that the transition that is happening right now from the various energy sources, this is not about closing an energy source down. It's about dealing with that there will be a demand side in 2035 that is 40% higher for demand for electricity. So renewable is not going to cut it alone, but we are going to take a material part of that. So instead of talking about your, your 20, which I'm already now <laughs> 24 days into, listen, I need to, I need to talk about what happens in three, five, ten years, because that's actually how we need to focus on how to expand Vestas' footprint uh, right now, participating and leading uh, a super exciting part of the renewable industry. Uh, fair to say, though, the environment is quite challenging, especially with the U.S.-China situation. I mean, that added to your cost in 2019. I mean, do you see the phase one deal helping to alleviate the cost that you're, you're, you're bearing? No, I think the phase one deal is not going to touch too much on our supply chain, uh, which we, we know. But I think it's, it's more like we are now coming from a 
in a situation where there were more tensions to less tensions. So I'm more looking at a, at a sort of a little bit of a, of a scale and saying it seems like we are easing it rather than uh, further tensing it. And therefore, I'm, I'm, I'm hopefully that when we look towards 21 and 22, that we have more natural or more ordinary circumstances. And if not, then it's up to us to adjust our global supply chain to deal with, uh, with those parameters.